this chapter 4, I'll try to, to preach real good in a short length of time. That's really not my speed. I'd really like to preach a long time. But I'll, try to, I'll try to do good. I'll try to do good. Heard a sermon the other day about the ministry. Priest on the ministry. Lord, did that man ever load our wagon. Ah, Lord, told me things I ought to be doing that I'm not doing. Told me things that I ought not do that I am doing. Told me how to build a church. Told me what God said. Not just what the, the preacher said. What God said. Listen, we can go by a lot of things. You can go by your organization if you want to. I thank God for the United Pentecostal Church International. I've been ordained in it over 40 years, but I'm going to tell you, I'd rather listen to what God has to say. Tell me what God wants. Tell me what God would have for me today. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and came, uh, she conceived and bare came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of ground, of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, Why hast thou, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground and now art thou cursed from the earth which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy, at thy, from thy hand and thou tillest when thou tillest the ground it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth and Cain said unto the Lord my punishment is greater than I can bear beautiful. I want to preach, if you'll let me, the way of Cain. Sing a chorus, ladies, if you will. Sing me a chorus. Lift your hands to Jesus. Lift your hands to Jesus. Thank you, Father. We love you today, Father. Bless you. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. The way of Cain. We don't like to talk about it, but it's there. In the first 11 chapters of Genesis, we'll find many first things, first time things appears in those 11 chapters of Genesis. It talked about the first woman the first commandment of God, the first marriage, the first home, the first sin, first death, and the first sacrifice, the first worship, the first murder, and the first curse, and many other things. It, in this passage of Scripture that we read, the Lord gives us a glimpse just a, just a glimpse into the world's first family. We see it all in the scripture. Cain and Abel, son of Adam and Eve. We talk about it. It's in our Sunday school brochures. It's in our books. Talk about Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. When I look at Cain, I tell you what I see. I see the scripture from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right 
unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So when I look at Cain and when I think about him, that's the kind of person I see that seems that in his, in his life, in his thinking, uh, whatever provoked him to, to come to these, this conclusion, but it, to me, now this is just me, and I think I got enough scripture, I can preach it. I, I see a person that seems to think that any way he wants to do it is okay. That he can just give what he wants to and hold back what he wants to. It seems as if to me that Cain is saying there's a way and it seems right unto me. But the scripture said it is the way of death. And so when I see Cain, when I think about Cain, this is the kind of person I think about. This is the kind of man that I visualize. And when I, as a pastor for many years, I see uh, in my experience with people, and I have uh, had a lot of experience with people, and because and people is my is my business. I, I deal with people. I don't deal in carpentry. I don't deal. I used to weld, but thank God I'm not a welder anymore, especially as hot as it is. Uh, but I deal with people. I, my life is people. I got people on my mind. When I go to bed at night, I'm praying for people. When I get up in the morning, I pray for people. When I go to lunch, I remember people because people is my business. Uh, it, it's something that I do. That's what I am. And through the time, through the years of my ministry, I've been here over 40 years and, and, and much longer than that preaching, but I see people. And many times I see what I see out of people sometimes I, I don't like uh, because sometimes uh, I see in people just the way of Cain, uh, just whatever I choose to do, preacher, God's going to be satisfied with it. Just however I choose to act, uh, whatever I choose to kill. If I want to go to church, I will. If I want to support the church financially, I will. But if I don't want to, I won't. And I see that attitude, and it's the way of Cain. That's what Cain thought. But my Bible said he was not acceptable unto God. God puts up a lot of stuff. Come on, saints, say amen. amen. Say I'm thankful. I'm glad he does. God puts up a lot of our spirits sometimes. He puts up with the way we act sometimes. But that don't mean it's acceptable. That don't mean he's pleased with it. He tolerates us sometimes. He tolerates our carnality. He tolerates our bad spirits. He tolerates our bad... Oh, you're not want to You want me to go eat? I'm telling you, God tolerates some things. But that does not mean he approves it. We live in, in a time of the way of Cain. Yes. Cain and Abel. The way that seems right unto a man. This verse describes the life of Cain. That's the kind of life he lived. Yes. It also tells the lives of people that I mentioned, people around us who live not by faith who walk not in the Spirit, that don't even try to walk in the Spirit, right. don't even give uh, any attention to walking in the Spirit, barely drags in the house of God when they come. I'm not being critical. Y'all pay me to be rude, remember? Y'all pay me every week to be rude, so I'm going to be rude today. People that just barely make it, to, and I... Thank God if you just had to crawl in on one leg and an elbow. Thank God you're here. I'm not, I don't mean that, but I'm telling you it's a little bit more than that. If we're not careful, we'll get the idea that we can just live any way we want to live and just do whatever we choose to do and God will take care of it. But I want to tell you that's the way of Cain. That's what Cain thought. That's the way he sacrificed. That's what he gave to God. He didn't give his best he didn't pour his heart into it. Is anybody hearing me? And it was the way of Cain. And it was the way of Cain that caused him to lose out to God. Hallelujah. He first described the life of Cain. And the lives of those that do not walk by faith. But walk in the flesh. This described is a lifestyle. And it's a hard lifestyle to break. Uh, just a sermonette won't break it. 
Somebody's got to get a Bible. Not, not, a, not a catalog, a Bible. Somebody, some preacher's got to get a Bible. Man, I like the, the, the old boy, the old man of God. Well, he probably wasn't old as me, I don't guess. But he's still old. Let us know that we don't need sermonettes. That's not what breaks the chains. We got to get into the Word of God. Greater. Come on, young people. Some, some young person, raise your hand and scream at me. Thank you, son. We get greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We got to understand the life of Cain, the ways of Cain. It's not acceptable. It, it, I can't just say it's wrong. I'm saying it's not acceptable. God does not accept it then. He didn't accept it then, and he won't accept it now. If we don't get dedicated to God, I fear. Hallelujah. It's a lifestyle called the way of Cain. It's a lifestyle. See, I got a lifestyle. My lifestyle is church. I was radical before I started pastoring. I was radical before I started preaching. I just thought somewhere in my mind, I come up with the idea that a child of God's supposed to go to church. You're just like a horse supposed to go to the watering trough when he gets thirsty. You try to hold one back. Usually, you get trampled if you're not careful. I used to ride horses a little bit too, the gentle horses. I learned a lesson. I had a quarter man, beautiful white. I mean, a beautiful horse, nuttier than a fruitcake. I was riding her one night in the arena at, the, at Raleigh. She and some friends of mine came up and were sitting on the, the fence. So I just, you know, kind of let her stroll up there, you know, and, and we're talking, and, and just all of a sudden, she just acted crazy, and she reared up, and, and I'm holding on to that crazy animal. She reared straight up and just stood there, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm just hanging on, man, and, and I felt it, man, when she started to go down backwards. She wasn't going forwards. And so I slid off of that horse. I just took my feet out of the stirrup and slid back and hit the ground on my feet right behind her as she was coming over. And I just kind of sidestepped. And she just fell right. I don't think she really meant to. I think she lost her balance. I used to do all kinds of that kind of stuff. Crazy. But when I got in church, I changed some things in my life. I, I don't mean, you know, I, I, I didn't go crazy. I Really, I don't, I'm not, you, I just act crazy, sweetheart. I'm not crazy. But when I got into church, I just thought, I, I, somewhere I got the idea that now that I'm going to live for God, see, I came in with one intention, Brother Ernie, in my mind. I didn't come in thinking, if it don't work, I'll go somewhere else or I'll try something else. I didn't come in with the attitude, if it don't work, I'll go back and get me a field of Jack Daniels. That was never in my mind. When I came in the apostolic, one God, Jesus, named church, I came in with one thing in my mind, giving all that I I've got it. And that's what I've done. That's why I get radical. That's why I scream when I preach it. Come on. Come on, somebody. I've got an idea that everything outside of that is the way it came. I got this crazy idea that if I don't go to the house of God like I'm supposed to, that I'm not giving God my best. I'm, I'm not implying if you miss church that you fax it. I'm not implying that. Please don't misunderstand. But I just got this crazy notion if I just miss church constantly, then I am not giving God my best. I got, a, I got this crazy idea that I'm giving my best somewhere else. You know, you go to a ball game. What do you go to a ball game for? To see your team win. What do you do when they score? You jump up straight and all die. <laughs> when you come to the house of God, you ought to give it your best. When the singers sing, even if you don't like the crazy song, you ought to at least shout. Right. 
You ought to at least support your youth. Right. You ought to at least support your leaders. Right. Don't, don't wind up getting tangled up in the life of Cain or in the lifestyle of Cain. Right. That, oh, well, I can just, you know, dedicate for Jesus. No, no, no. Oh, man. Do it, the psalmist said, with all your might. Do it just like you do it just for the world shoes. You don't sit there here with time and say, well, what that now? You're rooting for St. Louis, and they just won the World Series. And you sit there and say, well, what that now? <laughs> no, you don't. I know what you do. You jump up so hard, you kick your coffee table over. <laughs> That's giving them your best. Right, right, come on. You come to the house of God. Come on. See, what you're doing here, you're giving God something. When you lift your hands, you're giving God a praise. And if you don't, then where are you giving your best? Where are you putting your best? It's a lifestyle called the way of Cain. Jude 1 11 said, Woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain and reigned greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of, of, uh, of uh, Korah. It's a life of Cain. This reveals the, the, your character, the characteristics of all those, including me and including you and including your mother-in-law. It includes all of those who refuse to live according to this book. Oh, you missed a good point. Come on. Come on. This includes everybody that refuses to live according to the word of God. Amen. Give me truth. Yes, sir. Preacher, don't you let me sit on my hind end on a pew and fall asleep and go to hell Give me the truth. Amen. Tell me how to live. Tell my children how to live. Tell my girls how to dress. Tell my wife how to dress. I want the right attitude. I want to give everything I have to God. I want to live according to the word of God. This story begins that I read to you today. It begins with a pretty picture of hope. Listen to me. Adam and Eve, it's right after they sinned, was cast out of the beautiful garden of God. They placed an angel with a flaming sword at the entry to, of Eden uh, to uh, prevent Adam and Eve from re-entering. You know the story well. This is a story they, they tell in Sunday school. Adam and Eve was cast out and was forced to, to work the ground for food. See, what we'd be if it wasn't for Adam and Eve, we wouldn't have to work. We'd do like the rest of the world. We'd lay around. Well, we, we won't go there. We won't, we won't go there. I'll, I'll just leave that now. So, so the, the day of walking with the Lord in the cool of the day. Come on, picture it with me. Picture it with me, walking in the cool of the day. Feeling what you feel in these services, feeling it all the time. But that's what this was all taken away. Because they transgressed God's word. They refused to live according to what God said. So all this beautiful fellowship was, has now ended. Now it's time to get a job. Now you got to get out and till the ground, make, make a living so you feed yourself. So all this happens in, in the time of the way of, of it's, this is leading us up to the way of Cain. There was now light as they really know it now, and, and pain, things of light, with, with pain and sorrow. Uh, things had changed, and they, they had to toil uh, the, the ground, and they had to do like it seemed like hope was gone. Where is that fellowship? Adam could have said, Mama sitting around the dinner table. Mama, where, where did we go wrong? Where, where's that fellowship that we used to have? Where, where is that uh, uh, spirit of God that we used to feel? Don't you miss that, Mama? Don't you miss, don't, ain't you, don't, don't you regret 
what we did. Come on, is anybody hearing me? Yes. It, it, it would lead right up to the way of Cain. Listen carefully to me. Listen carefully. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to slow down just a fraction and, and read to you. And Adam and Eve was cast out, and and and, and the cool of the days, uh, a spirit was gone, and 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 there was now life, and now they live in life, you know. And, and the Bible said in Genesis four one, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord, or I have gotten. Uh, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Okay, now, now listen to me. So, new life has begun. Right. Now something new is coming. New life begins. Then, then one day, that wait was all over. He gave birth to the first baby born into the world. Did you know that Adam was the only man married didn't have a mom-in-law? <laughs> Isn't that something? New life has come forth. Now the story begins with a, a beautiful picture. Eve named the baby Cain. You know what it meant? It meant I have gotten. I have got. Listen to me. Eve gave the glory to the Lord when she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. What a blessing it was. Then came another child, another son. They called him Abel. And in light of their sin, of Adam and Eve, and in the light of all of that, listen to me, all that lost fellowship that, that they lost with God, these babies brought hope back into that family. They knew, they knew that they had that they had lost that fellowship with God, like like they had been. But hope come into the world uh, that must have seen that in a world that their world. Imagine yourself. Going home today and not being able to feel God. Not being able to, to recognize God's presence. Go all week long without even recognizing God. Must, it must have been terrible for them to sit at a dinner table and the Spirit of God not moving like it was in the cool of the day. Am I making sense to you? Picture it in your mind. No wonder Jesus stood right outside the city of Jerusalem and looked over it and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered thee together as a hen gathers her chickens? But ye would not. It wasn't that Jesus wouldn't. They wouldn't. It didn't have anything that God wants you to come to him. It's got nothing to do with what God wants. What do you want? Young people, it can't, it, this ain't a God thing at right, 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 this particular moment. It's a you thing. Yeah. How often would I have gathered thee together, but you wouldn't do it? Right. Now comes the, the bomber. Behold, your house is left unto you. Yeah. Desolate. You know what that means? Because you know, back prior to that, he said, Behold, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Right. But he said, Your house. It's going to be desolate. They, they, this never should become our house. I know he's talking about this. I know he's talking about this. I'm not stupid. I ain't been to Bible college, but I'm not ignorant. But he, he, this building is never to be. That's Brother Chris's church. Oh, no, it's not. Don't, uh -uh, don't you hang that on me. Uh -uh, this is God's church. Who's welcome? Anybody that comes through those doors is welcome in this church. This is God. Behold, but your house, he said, is going to be left on you desolate. How would you like it, Sunday school teachers, youth leaders? How would you like it if next Sunday you went into a desolate Sunday school? A Sunday school that didn't even believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I would give my tithes to a preacher that ain't got enough sense or enough word of God to get up and preach me the truth. I wouldn't support it. I wouldn't, keep, I wouldn't have keep a church door open if all they had was spaghetti dinners and suppers uh, and some kind of preacher getting up and reading some funny joke from a book. I wouldn't support it. I'd find me a church where the preacher had enough sense to say that never mind what the board wants, uh, what the Sam the Lord. You ought to clap your hands. Hallelujah. Because these babies got new hope. Maybe, maybe, mama, maybe, maybe something can change now. Maybe something can get better. We're in a world 
I'm in a world, you're in a world, my kids, I'm raising grandkids and great grandkids. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm happy to raise them. Right. I feel like sometimes I'm raising them. If I can keep them out of Florida. No, that's a joke, yeah. I'm in a world that seems hopeless, Ernie. When I look at the media, and you know, you'll never, you couldn't hire me. Now, this is just me, okay? This don't fit you. You couldn't give me enough money to speak evil against my president. I won't do it. I don't agree with him, but right. I won't speak evil. Right. God tuned my engine. Sitting on my love seat at my house one morning, jumping somewhere between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. I was criticizing in my heart. I've done it from this pulpit. I've criticized that man. I've talked bad about him and his staff, and God let me know somewhere between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. If you pray for your president as much as you criticized him, I might could do something with it. We're in a world that's almost hopeless. We're in a situation that's almost hopeless. But thank God for Jesus Christ. We're not hopeless. This world is not hopeless. These two boys grew up in the same home. They ate at the same table. They had the same parents. They were taught the same thing. But as they grew, some differences began to emerge and come alive. Right. Cain followed his father's footsteps and became a farmer. But Abel became a shepherd. Bore, uh, both, uh, both were in very important to the family. Then, as they reached adult age, this is all scripture, these young men came before the Lord to worship. I read it to you. I'm sure that they had been trained by, by their parents. I almost know that. You know, you know how what our girls did when we were when they were young and, and, and my wife trained them girls. They, she'd tell them every just about every service, five so minutes before, all right girls, go to the bathroom, get you some water, and go sit down. Just training them. Yep. The Bible said, train up a child. Right. And I know that they had to have been training these people. They had been trained by their parents to have how to approach God. Right. Boldly come to the throne of grace, the preacher said. How to, how to approach God. Their parents knew how to walk with God. They had walked with God. They knew the things about God. Right. I was praying for somebody in the altar one night. It's been several Maybe years now. I lose track of time, man. I tell you. I got so much up here, it can't get much more in it. Oh. Uh, I was praying for somebody that was backslidden, and I knew they were backslidden. And I said, I just got in there close up. I said, You know how to praise God. Why don't you start praising God? You know how. You've done it before. You said, Well, that ain't the way to pray. Well, it may have not been, but it worked. And so I know they were, I know, I know. And they knew how to approach God. They knew how to walk with God. Right. Out of me, and they knew what it was to lose. Right. Lose that sweet presence and fellowship with God. Now, down here, we call it backslid. That's what we call it. They knew all about that. But they backslid. That's, for a better word, that's what I'm going to use. If that offends you, just get saved. You'll be fine. So they knew all about that. They knew all about that sweet fellowship. They were there when God confronted them over their sins. God confronted them and killed an animal to provide covering for their nakedness. They were there. God knew. I wonder how many times Adam took that little boy and that little took two little boys and <laughs> sat him on his knee and said, son, here's what God expects out of you. I just wonder. I wonder how many times mama took them boys and sons, you know. Them sons, sometimes they, they lean toward mama. But them girls lean toward daddy, you see. I just wonder how much training they really give them. Are you understanding? I bet they did. I, that's a bigger speech I don't know. But if I was a betting person, I'd bet you a dollar to a donut. 
they trained them. Talk. Now it comes time for worship. It comes time for worshiping. Abel, let's see where am I at here. Uh, how many times did Eve warn those sons? Let me, let me, let me hurry. I know it, it's hot in here and I'm hot. You're hot. Cain and Abel came before the Lord to make an offering. The Bible says if you go to the presence of the Lord, bring an offering. So they came to, to make an offering to him. And, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit. I'm Genesis 4 3, brought of the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. Verse 4 said, And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of the flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Right, is everybody listening to me now? I'm about ready, I'm about ready to close here about another 45 minutes, I think. So. <laughs> Cain brought of the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought of the firstlings, and I'm pronouncing that word right, of his flock and of the fat thereof. Now, I'm fixing to show you something. You ready? God approved Abel's offering and rejected Cain's offering. The spirit of Cain. So, what was the big difference? I can read you. I can't find it, but I can find it. God accepted Abel's offering because it was a blood sacrifice. And you know the Bible said without the shedding of the blood, there's no remission. You know, we understand that. Uh, but that's not the only reason that he accepted that sacrifice because in Deuteronomy and, and in Leviticus, both of those books, uh, the fruit of the field was an offering accepted by God. But not in this case of the, for, the, for sin offering. But the main primary sacrifice was of blood. For without the shedding of the blood, where an where, uh, uh, innocent sacrifice died, for guilty sinners. Just like you. And just like me. We are guilty. I love that song. If I was a singer. I'd sing. man. I'd sing. I'd, like, I'd sing like old Squire Parker. I wouldn't sound near as good as he does. But I sing. What's that song? I saw the man. Anybody hear that song? I saw the man. Oh wow. I can sing. Y'all won't know I'm messing up. I saw the man. What, how, boy, if you should ever pass an old looking glass, won't that be a reflection on you? You'll see the man, you'll see the eyes that turned aside. You'll see the lips that sadly whispered crucify. You'll see the feet that walked in sin. You'll see the hands that drove the nails in him. I was that man that crucified the Lord. You see, the Lord was crucified for me. He was crucified. He shed his blood for you and for me. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. We see it at Calvary. We see the blood sacrifice in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. We see a blood sacrifice out of Egypt in Exodus 12, 1 through 13. We see a blood sacrifice in Leviticus 16, 16 through 28. Then we see it again at Calvary when Jesus, the Lamb of God, walked up Calvary's hill and gave his life blood that you and I could be saved without the shedding of the blood. There is no remission of sin. Hallelujah. As much as I love our organization, I thank God for our group. I think we got a super organization, but it ain't going to save you. It won't. Your church membership, you can have a card in every pocket in your breeches or in your dress or in your purse, whatever you got. You can have a church membership card, but if you ain't been born of the water and of the spirit, you are lost. Oh, I wish somebody had to preach. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For 2 Corinthians 5, 21. 1 Peter 2, 24 said, Who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should 
live in to live unto righteousness by whom stripes ye were healed. The Bible said that Abel brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. Let me dwell just a minute. I know it's hot. I'm going in up. Had any sin to pull my coat off. The word firstlings means best. Best. Abel brought the best that he had. I tell these young preachers, I tell Ernie, I tell Sam, you don't have to preach like me. You do your best. And that's all God requires. If when I do my best, I told an elder at the camp meeting this year, this week, he was telling, I said, but here's the deal, elder, when you do your best and I do my best, we're even. Because the ground's level at Calvary. Amen. Ain't no big shot at Calvary. Amen. And so we've shed, we're saved by the shed. The, it means the best. I believe Abel carefully selected the best. I believe he went to the flock, told the servant, open that gate. And that servant opened that gate. He said, Are you guard the gate? Don't let nobody out. He goes through. He said, I, I, this is, I'm, I'm speculating. He, he did that. He chose the best. You got to choose something. You got to get after what ain't the best. Right, right. Don't want that. That's got hurt foot. That skin its knee. Don't want that. That one's got the mange. Sure don't want that. Pick, get, and, but found one. Ernie found the best. You know. You know what? When them babies are born, I know what we did. We counted toes and fingers and noses and eyes and ears and and they even tried to count their teeth, but they didn't have. Well, you understand? Well, I'm sure they was the best. Am I making sense? He chose. He selected the best. And he brought the best. That's what it said. That's what it means. The best. And he brought the best and gave it to God. And the Bible said that God was pleased. You just give your best. Give your best. And God's pleased. Don't you hold back. Don't you hold back. Don't you say, well, I'm going to put this in my pocket. One little voice in my pocket. I'll put it right here in my pocket. And I'm going to give this over here. God don't accept that. If that ain't your best, God don't accept it. When you sing, you sing your best. I'm not a singer, Sister Pooh. I'm not. I'm not a singer. But if I sing, write it in the book. It's my best. <laughs> I'm preaching right now my best. I'm not saving my best for Wednesday night. I might get hit by 18 weeks. And my best will be in my briefcase. I'm doing my best right now. He's selecting his best. God don't accept nothing but that. Boy, I got a theory and theory, and I think I got scripture to back it up. Man told me one time, he said, I'm going to, he had a big time check. He was going to buy a new carpet for the church. And that's going to be my times. I said, uh-uh. He said, what do you mean, uh-uh? I said, I mean, uh-uh. You can't do that. He said, why? I said, time belongs to the priesthood. And if you want to give a three or $4,000 offering to buy a carpet, jump on it. Don't you tell me you're paying your tithes and putting it in the carpet. That ain't Bible. The Bible said he gave the tithe, the tenth, the whole tenth, the whole tenth to the Levi. I can't, that's, that's not my best. If I owe $3,000 tithes, I better pay $3,000 to the church, and if I got money left over, I can buy a carpet. But that ain't my best. I can't give 9%. That ain't my best. I can't, you, are you, I, you say, well, you're just preaching because you're the preacher. Honey, I don't get all these tithes. I get a salary, but I don't keep all them. Uh-uh, don't you? Uh-uh, I rebuke that devil. No, sir. That ain't true. He chose, he carefully selected the best animal. He had, he took time to prepare that sacrifice. He took time to prepare. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice that came by which he obtained witness 
that he was righteous. I read that from Hebrews 11, 4. He was righteous. His sacrifice revealed, ready for this? Ready? Pull your feet under the chair. Just to stomp your toe. His sacrifice revealed the condition of his heart. It was the best. Cain's sacrifice also revealed the condition of his heart. What is your heart telling you today? What does your when your heart speaks? What does it have to say? What do we do to, to, to satisfy God? It be, when we do it, everything I do is the same way. It's got to be my best. To cut the grass, I'm going to cut it pretty. Brother Billy Goforth used to cut this grass. He cut it for 10 or 15 years by himself. He didn't want nobody cut. One of the young people was out here one day playing the lawnmower, cutting the cigarettes. He said, I don't want that kid <laughs> messing up my grass. You know what he done? He throwed all the grass one way. It was purposely cut. I said, Billy, let us let the church pay you. No, preacher. No, I don't want to pay. I said, well, let us buy you gas. No, no. We'll take no gas. We'll take no pay. We'll take no gas. He'd come out and he'd just go to sing and you could hear him singing over the line more. I, I tell the truth. I stopped one day, Brother Ernie, I looked at the back of his truck and his gas can was there and it's about almost empty. So I took it, put it in my truck, and took it to town, filled up the gas probably like a second. Our, what we kill reveals the condition of our heart. How I worship, how I give, how I pray, how I weep, how I give my tithes, how I give my love offering. If I give my tithes regretting that the preacher's going to get paid out of them, I might as well just keep them in my pocket because it reveals the condition of my heart. Did you know I pay tithes just like everybody else? I give a tenth of everything that I possess. I give a tenth. You know what I do when I give it? I could care less what the church does with it. I could care less. I done my part. I gave my best. It showed the condition of your heart. When you come to church, whatever you do for God shows the condition of your heart. It evidently it was it was a, uh, it, it, it it shows how it show it reveals my confidence. In what God has promised. Give, and it shall be given. That ain't necessarily your money. Give, and it shall be given. Young people, hear me. Give your best. Give your best to God. Don't hold back your best until you're old, 60, 70, 80 years old, and sit in your rocking chair with your great grandkids and say, Honey, I wish I gave my best. Give your best tonight. It seems that Cain's offering said, I know what you said, but here is what I want to give. It just didn't work. He was rejected. Sister Creasy was, uh, no, Rebecca, I'm sorry. Come on, come up here. Good. It's almost like he was saying, I'm not saying this, I'm saying almost like he was saying, take it or leave it. All I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do. Cain's offering said, my way will work just as well as your way. Don't that remind you of the children of Israel when they told Moses, said, I don't want to hear what you've got to say. God can speak to us just like he does you. Don't you remember? Do you remember reading about that? But God rejected it. In Abel, that was an acknowledgement of his sin. We be. And his need of a Savior. We used to have this old boy. He was a great guy. He was a super guy. He used to say, now this is what he said now. I, this ain't my words. He said, I don't believe you can be saved without squalling. I said, where are you? Our name is Brother Crock, I think. I said, where do you get that at, brother? He said, well, he said, when a baby's born into the world, the baby, Dr. Spanks them real on the rear end and they bawl. 
I said, well, you're born again. You ought to borrow a little bit. Well, that was his theory. And I can tell you, I don't know that it, I don't know that it's Bible, but I don't know that it ain't a bad theory either. Just weeping before God. Weeping before God. We need to understand that God will not accept our religion. Not our religion, but he accepts our sacrifice. I'm not against church membership. Thank God we, we need church members. We need that. You need a pastor. You need somebody that can say something nice over you when you grow. You, you need a pastor. But that God don't do that. That's not the way God. He will. He will. He won't. He, he will not accept my work. He don't accept because I get out here and you guys and thank God I I I just with Ernie I appreciate all the workers over here. But that, that's not what gets you to heaven. That's not. That's not do. God will not accept nothing but what He has provided. The blood of Jesus. No wonder the old patriot Abraham. How can you preach without preaching about Abraham? I'm going to let you go. I, know, I'm not, I don't get paid over time, so I'm going to let you go. Abraham stood at the foot of that mountain. His son stood beside him. The service was all around him. And Abraham looked up on yonder mountain and told one of the servants, said, y'all stay here. Stay right here. Me and the lad, we're going yonder to worship, but we will return. No wonder when they got up there, Isaac said, Father, behold the wood and the fire. But where's the sacrifice? He said, Son, God will provide himself a lamb. Over thousands of years later, the lamb walked up the other side of that mountain to a hill called Calvary and walked up and gave himself a sacrifice for your sins and for my sins. Remember, without the shedding of the blood. No, we must stand with me. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus said unto them, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come up unto the Father but by me. Truer words were never more spoken. I'm asking today that you come and kneel your uh, body, kneel your feet, bow your head, and talk to Jesus today. You already say, that's good, that's fine. You're not actually, and that's super. You just come and find you a place to kneel. Talk to the Lord. If you're here, if you're not saved, come on with them. Just come on down front.